I know from the countless conservative articles I've seen today that Ted Cruz's comments on the rowdy tour of the Capitol on January 6th, calling it, quote, a violent terrorist attack on the Capitol, have outraged many conservatives. Ted was once the darling of intellectually inclined conservatives, but I think the bloom is now off that rose. Tucker Carlson used video of Cruz's comments as the keystone of a segment on how Republicans are being cowardly and granting Democrats their false premises on the riot at the Capitol, being an insurrection or even a terrorist attack. As Tucker put it, he was delivering talking points for Merrick Garland. We'll watch the surrendering soundbite right after this quick commercial break to pay some bills. Do you have a personal butcher? I certainly don't. Well, until now, I introduce to you the personal butcher. They offer you the highest quality meats by partnering with best-in-class farms located in the United States. Okay, so here's how it works. They'll send you a custom box every four weeks and you can pause or cancel at any time or just change the frequency of deliveries. The personal butcher believes that quality meat shouldn't be a hassle to get your hands on. They want every home in America to have access to the best quality and with the same convenience as getting the mail from your mailbox. So let's talk quality. They offer the best quality products raised here in the United States. Grass-fed beef, free-range chicken, anabolic free pork. Their meat is 100% raised, processed, packed, and shipped in the United States. It's processed from family farms in Idaho, Montana, and Iowa. It's then packaged and shipped out of their Chicago land area distribution center. So if you're interested in feeding yourself and your family from a high quality source you can trust, while at the same time supporting this channel, give the personal butcher a try by hitting that link in the description box. Uh, we are approaching a solemn anniversary this week, uh, and it is an anniversary of a violent terrorist attack on the Capitol, where we saw the men and women of law enforcement demonstrate incredible courage, incredible bravery, uh, risk their lives uh, to defend the men and women who serve in this Capitol. Okay, so what could possibly have happened to Ted to turn him into such a blatant shill for Democrat midterm narratives? Is he maybe feeling pressure over having protested voting results and fears being branded as an insurrectionist? Maybe he actually thinks Mark Elias' scheme to disqualify Republicans from running for office is a real threat to him. But he of all people should know that appeasing the enemy doesn't work, a la Luce Cheney and Mitt Romney and of course Cocaine Mitch. As I'm sure you know, he's living on borrowed time. Well, borrowed time Trump borrowed to him. Has he been in the Senate too long and now wants to avoid conflict with the Democrats? Comity, meaning courtesy and considerate behavior towards others. That's the word that used to be used, but these days the Democrats are offering none of it. They want to destroy the filibuster to ram through voting procedures that would enable perpetual cheating with mail-in ballots being counted for days and days and days after elections. But the real problem for me is, anyways, Ted Cruz knows this. Hell, he's a sharp guy. He probably knows this better than 98% of the Democrats conducting this soap opera horseshit on Capitol Hill right now. My guess, and keep in mind this is only speculation, is that he has given up on his quest to become president and now aspires to join the Supreme Court. Perhaps he's even thinking of confirmation, assuming a Republican wins the presidency. This would be his way of avoiding a charge of radicalism. Whatever his reasoning, I am deeply disappointed in this guy. We've got enough problems on our side. Because again, guys this smart just don't slip up when speaking publicly like this. And I don't want to hear it was his assistant that was just trying to read the room and get in and out without a scratch. It's really not that hard, folks. All you really need to do is play to win. Oh, and don't call your voting base terrorists. That would be a good idea as well. Anyways, here's the full interview between Tucker Carlson and Ted Cruz. He came on the show tonight because, well, he's a damn good lawyer and he thought he could fend for himself. I can respect that. Tell me what you think. Senator Cruz was game enough to come on tonight. We appreciate that. He joins us now. Senator, thanks so much for coming on. So I guess what I, I mean, there are a lot of dumb people in the Congress. You're not one of them. I think you're smarter than I am. Uh, and you never use words carelessly. 
Um, and yet you called this a terror attack when by no definition was it a terror attack. That's a lie. You told that lie on purpose, and I'm wondering why you did. Well, Tucker, thank you for having me on. When you aired your episode last night, I, I sent you a text shortly thereafter and said, listen, I'd like to go on because the way I phrased things yesterday, it, it was sloppy and, and it was frankly dumb. And, I don't and buy that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I don't well, buy that. For, look, I've known you a long time since before you went to the Senate. You were a Supreme Court contender. You take words as seriously as any man who's ever served in the Senate. And every word you repeated that phrase, I do not believe that you used that accidentally. I just don't. It's, so, Tucker, as a result of my sloppy phrasing, it's caused a lot of people to misunderstand what I meant. Let me tell you what, what I meant to say. What I was referring to are, are the limited number of people who engaged in violent attacks against police officers. Now, I think you and I both agree that if you assault a police officer, you should go to jail. That's who I was talking about. And the reason the phrasing was sloppy is I have talked dozens, if not hundreds of times. I've drawn a distinction. I wasn't saying that the thousands of peaceful protesters supporting Donald Trump are somehow terrorists. I wasn't saying the millions of, of, of patriots across the country supporting President Trump are terrorists. And that's what a lot of people have misunderstood well, that comment. Wait a I second, focused, but even your yeah. way, but hold on. What you just said doesn't make sense. So if somebody assaults a cop, he should be charged and go to jail. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. We have said that for years. But that person's still not a terrorist. How many people have been charged with terrorism on January so listen, 6th? Like, why'd you not, use that word? You're playing but, into the other side's characterization that, as Joe Kent just explained, allows them to define an entire population as foreign combatants. And you know that. So why'd you do it? So, so Tucker, let me answer you directly. The, the reason I use that word for a decade, I have referred to people who violently assault police officers as terrorists. I've done so over and over and over again. If you look at all the assaults we've seen across the country, I've called that terrorism over and over again. That being said, Tucker, I agree with you. It was a mistake to say that yesterday. And the reason is what you just said which is we've now had a year of Democrats in the media twisting words and trying to say that all of us are terrorists, trying to say you're a terrorist, I'm a terrorist. And so, look, I don't like people who, who assault cops and, and, and I well, stand up and defend cops. And, and the reason I use that word is that's the word I've always used for people that violently attack cops. But in this context, I get why people were angry because we've had a year of the corrupt corporate media and Democrats claiming anyone who, who objected to, to the election fraud. And by the way, remember what was happening during wait, wait, those wait, wait, protests. Wait, can, can I just ask, hold on, you work in the Senate. I, I guess I just don't believe you. And I mean that with respect because I have such respect for your acuity and your precision. And I've seen it on display. I've covered you as a reporter. I know how you speak. And you have sat there for a year and watched people use language to distort the events of that day. Intentionally. Insurrection. Coup. And, and it, of course it terrorism. was an insurrection. Saying it's an insurrection is a political term. It's a lie. I've repeatedly denounced it. And, and, and when it comes to, look, I was focusing on what I normally say. That, what you aired was a little 15-second snippet. What I normally say is violence is wrong, peaceful protest is right. If you engage in violence, you should be prosecuted. If you're speaking, you have a right to speak. I right. say that all the time. Well, I meant and I agree. That snippet. So who's Ray Epps, by the way, since you are a senator? Like there, he and this other guy are clearly encouraging yeah. the crowd to commit crimes. Neither one has been arrested or charged. What is that, do you think? So I think that is a very good question. I don't know who Ray Epps is. I've seen that video multiple times. It's disturbing. Right? He's clearly urging the crowd to violate the law. When you see the crowd start chanting, fed, 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 for him to appear on the FBI's most wanted list and come off, it certainly suggests he was working for the FBI. That's not conclusive, but that's the obvious implication. And the attorney general and the Department of Justice won't answer the question. Tucker, I can tell you, I joined with a number of other senators trying to get the Biden DOJ to answer the question, why so many January 6 prisoners are in solitary confinement, why they're be tr being treated so much worse than the Antifa rioters and, and, and the people who committed firebombing and, and a year of riots across the country. And this Biden DOJ won't go after them. But let me also make a quick point, Tucker. Remember, while, while thousands of people were standing up to defend this country on January 6th, at that exact moment, I was standing on the Senate floor 
objecting to the election results, demanding that we, we, we impanel an election commission to consider evidence of voter fraud. And I brought together 11 senators to join me in supporting getting to the bottom of that. So, of course, it would be ridiculous for me to be saying that the people standing up and protesting to follow the law were somehow terrorists. I was talking about people who commit violence against cops. And you and I both agree, if you commit violence against cops, you should go to jail. Yeah, but you're not a terrorist. You know, you're not. You're a guy you, who, you know guy who assaults a cop. Okay, so I, that, there's, a, there's, a, there's a legal difference, as you well know, better than I do, since you were actually in the running for the Supreme Court. And there's a moral difference between a guy, so the Tucker, you know, the, the, right? the reason Big I time. use that word is for a decade, I've used that word for people that violently assault cops. I use that word all in 2020 for the Antifa and BLM terrorists that assaulted cops and firebomb police cars. But yeah. I agree. It was a mistake to use the word yesterday right. because the Democrats and the corporate media have so politicized it. They're yeah. trying to paint everyone as a terrorist, and it's well, a lie. Exactly. And by the way, I've spoken out vocally against your exchange you just had. They want to paint us as Nazis. Yes, I know, it's scary. that is what they're trying to do. And I just, look, I'm the one leading the fight in the Senate against this garbage. And it's what Good. I have been doing, and it's what I'll continue doing. Well, I appreciate your coming on tonight. Thank you very much, Senator Ted Absolutely. Cruz of Texas. Thanks. Most of this came by way of the American Thinker. If you liked it, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. There's a PayPal link in the description box, so please put a dollar in the bucket on the way out the door. I'd like to thank everyone for all your donations. They're much needed and much appreciated. Now, with all that being said, we'll see you next time. Come on, move. Move. Easy, easy.